Swole Benji here. Today I wanted to show off tier 5 solo dungeons and how long it takes to amass 1 million silver from them. Spoilers, it's about 1 hour and 20 minutes at its worst. I had to shoot this like hundreds of times to finally get a run where I didn't get any faction capes and I didn't get any kind of tier 7 point whatever or 6.2 and up items. I wanted to show what at your absolute worst luck how long it would take to get a million silver. Now why do I do tier 5 yellow dungeons? I do tier 5s because they are 100% safe. I don't have to risk losing any gear. There's almost no travel time to and from town and I can do them back to back and AFK or go do other things like stretch, maybe you watch a YouTube video, have a snack. I can do all sorts of other things while doing this farm. I don't have to sit down and do 100% focus. Like if you're a child and you have a nagging mother, it's like, man, do your homework, man, do the dishes or whatever. Then y this is for you because if you're in a corrupt dungeon and you go do the dishes because your mom tells you to or whatever, and then you come back and you're dead, well, you just lost, you know, hundreds of thousands of silver. By doing this method, you don't lose anything. You will lose absolutely nothing. It is, it's completely safe, and once you get the gear, and once you get the method down, you can delete bosses. As you can see, I'm deleting bosses in like less than 10 seconds. They're just, I walk up to them and they just completely die. And I can immediately loot the chest. Now, builds like this, if you've watched my other videos, the bolt caster builds, you can just completely delete dungeons. I have on screen, it shows the dungeon floors completed how much loot I'm getting from each chest, and this is the worst possible run because I normally get way, way more purple chests, and I normally get faction capes and other high valuable items, but with a build like the Bolt Casters or this, you can literally run through the dungeon and delete all the trash mobs, so for me, I average about 1 minute and 40 seconds per dungeon floor, but I rounded it up uh, at the end of this video to be 2 minutes, so 2 minutes per floor, and most dungeons are one to three floors in the yellow zone, all right? Now, sometimes if it's a two-floor dungeon, the first floor will have no bosses, so it's kind of, kind of adds to the time. But other than that, it's completely safe, guys. I know a lot of, I get so many comments from people that don't know how to do the logic. They're like, oh, well, well you're doing a, you're doing a tier five dungeon in tier 8.3, you loser. And uh, to that, I have to say, why would you do a tier 5 dungeon in anything but 8.3? Why would you do it in 4.1? That would take longer. There's no reason not to use 8.3. The repair cost is actually smaller than if you're using, like, flat tier 6. Then you may be asking, why don't you just go do black zone dungeons? Go do tier 8 black zone dungeons, bro. Tier 8 black zone dungeons, those guys that do tier 8 black zone dungeons, they make so much money and so much fame per hour, you're wasting your time in tier 5s. And to that I say no, I'm actually making more money than them, and more fame, and I can prove it. And that is because I utilize journals. If you do not utilize journals, then obviously you won't be. But at the same time, those tier 8 people, they either have a big ass guild that protects them and owns the entire zone with like 15 hideouts, or something like that, or they just keep dying and they don't factor in their losses, you know? A lot of people that play this game, they don't factor in time s traveling to travel to an eight, a tier 8 zone, and to travel back is like 15 minutes, like round trip. And if you die during that trip with all of your looties, if you get invaded during your dungeon, which you have to set at the entrance of each dungeon for 90 seconds. And guys, let me tell you, there are hacks out there called ESP. It's basically like a radar hack. It shows them a mini-map. It shows them lines connecting to their character to yours. They can see you. They can ride by and see where the fuck you are and track you. And they know if you're in a dungeon or not without having to explore the dungeon. Like, and you're going to spend 90 seconds waiting for that portal to close? Well, you know what? I've watched streamers do that, and you know what happens? I'm not, not even just for streamers. Like, guilds like Arch, they will just camp outside your dungeon when it disappears with, like, 20 people, and as soon as you zone out, you're surrounded by 20 people. They're to take your loot, like vicious little hyenas, okay? So, I don't like to do that. I don't like donating gear. I don't like blowing up an entire dungeon only to have to give it away to someone else because they have more people than I do. Which, I don't have any people. It's just me. Yeah, if I had a big-ass guild like uh, Lupac, you know, I'd just ride around Avalonian dungeons making 8 million an hour all day. Who cares? 
Yeah, I get it. If you have friends, obviously you're gonna make more money, but this is this is for all of you burnout ghost boys that in school, you know, that didn't have any friends that you post on 4chan, you know, you're an incel or a former incel. This is for all of you lads, because you guys are my people. This isn't for normies, this isn't for social people. This guide, this video isn't for people that have lives, that have business jobs and high educations that grew up in a nice fancy neighborhood with a house and a loving family and a white picket fence in a two-story house. No, this video is not for them. This video is for you guys, you dredges of society that have no friends, that can't make friends, that don't know how to make friends. I don't know how to make friends. Okay, this video is for people like me. I make videos for myself. Every video on my channel that I have made, I have made it for myself so that I can, if I ever wanted to play an old video game again, like, my first ever videos were Will to Live Online. I've forgotten how to play that game. I don't know the buttons to that game. I don't even know the map layouts anymore. It's been like two years. But I can go back and I can watch my videos that I made on that game and I can be right back where I was. So that's what I'm doing with this video. This video is mainly made for me and people like me because I want to help people that are like me out there and not people that are normies, okay? And if you're a normie watching this, then maybe you can... I don't know, just show a little sympathy, okay? Not all of us were privileged like you guys were, but regardless, this is the best way to make money while leveling up your character, okay? And a lot of people are like, well, why don't you show group dungeons? You can clearly solo group dungeons. You've made a video on that. Well, soloing group dungeons is for fame only. It costs lots of silver. You're not making any profit. And remember, I gave away like all my shit and then uh, the last video I spent a hundred million that I earned back on farmland. So I am broke. I am absolutely broke right now. And I, I don't have 50 million silver to go blow up group dungeons for a day and get max spec, okay? So I have to do this. And for all you people saying, well, <laughs> tier 8 dungeons? Tier 8 dungeons are still better, bro. Tier 8 dungeons are the best fame and items, and I don't care if it, you know, travels, it's worth dying with my shitty flat 6 sets. Your flat 6 set is gonna take over 8 minutes to clear a tier 8 dungeon, bro. The thing is, dungeon drops are like a slot machine, and the worst time to play the slot machines, if they're bingo based, which is a tier 3 gambling machine, look it up, I'm not gonna educate you on gambling at the moment. But the more people playing, the less chance you have to win because essentially the computer AI algorithm will play bingo until someone gets a bingo. It's not like you're waiting, you know, X amount of minutes for a bingo. It's like there's bingos every fucking second on those machines, okay? So the way it works with dungeons is every time you open a chest, you have a chance to grab from the loot pool of the black market. And right now, while filming this was in the absolute morning, so all the big guilds, all the people with the friends that I was hating on earlier, they're all out there blowing up Avalonian dungeons and Avalonian chests that are really easy to get if they, you know, have hideouts nearby and, and friends. And they're getting 650% of uh, the loot every time they open a chest. Whereas we're getting like 84%, so we're getting a, a small and fraction. Why? But if you play during the off times, if you play during the slower times, sometimes if you play during prime time when all the guild people are busy doing their guild wars and Zerg versus Zerg crap, then yeah, you can get a pretty big share of the loot. And before corrupted dungeons, when people weren't even running dungeons, this this method made so much freaking money. This method was absolutely crazy because there there just was so much loot and no one was really doing dungeons like the runes were worth a lot of money and everything else. So all you gotta do. All you gotta do is just do the dang dungeons. Just get out there in a the yellow zone with your best possible gear. Don't flag up. Don't faction flag up, okay? I forgot to actually, at the end of this video, to show you the numbers. But don't faction fla flag up. You'd only make 500,000 more in the whole hour and you'd be risking 10 million in loot. Which means also if you use lesser tier gear, which takes you longer to clear while faction flag, it still wouldn't be worth it. Look, there are bots stationed outside of every city that scout you and report automatically to a discord that you're out there doing it. So just don't faction flag, okay? Alright, so here is the loot in all of its glory. I wanted to show you guys one of the worst runs, okay, during the worst times of the day, which is right in the morning, when you play right in the morning, everyone's doing the Avalonian stuff, and there won't be any black market loot to go around. Now, normally, when you do this at off hours, or even prime time, you're, you're gonna get plenty of faction capes, 
tier 6.2, tier 7.2, maybe some 7.3, which is huge. Like one fashion cape is 100k usually. And you you can get like 10 an hour, easy, easy. Like that's just a that's a pure million right here. Anyway, let's look at the loot. A lot of tier 5 weapons. We got some tier 6, a 6.1 torch isn't worth much. It's only 20k. Uh, so again, that is not a big one. There's this weird masterpiece item here. It's 23k. That's gonna take forever to sell anyway. Uh, the bags are always good. Bags are good money, easy money. Like that's 80k in bags. Uh, mob loot, uh, loot for mobs. It was two tomes of insight and a hunter hood, which was like 57k. That dropped at the very start of the run, and then I got no item drops after that. I might have got item drops, but this build clears so fast. The way this build works is I turn on. Uh, Spectre Jacket, and I just fucking run through mobs and just burn everything to heck, okay? So, uh, it's 923k in loot, there's 237k here in silver bags, and I accidentally used the silver bags from the legendary chest, so they're not in here, because I needed to make room, alright? Now, let me go over the t uh, the tomes, the, the journals, right? So, mercenary journals, I uh, filled 126 of these bad boys, and for me, they average around, it's a little more than 2,000 each, but I round down. Every item value you see on the screen, I have rounded down. On repairs, I rounded up so that it's, you know, against our favor. Now, I'm going to round down on the value of these mercenary journals and say they're worth 2,000 each. So, 126 mercenary journals, 2,000 each, that's 252 additional thousand that I will be earning per day, and I actually have more mercenary uh, mercenaries than 126, so easy, you may not have this. I'm only leveling mercenaries because maybe one day they'll be buffed. Uh, now, uh, generalist trophies. These really differ depending on the tier. Right now, my laborers are at tier 3, as you can see in here. I have tier 3 laborers just waiting to get fed journals like hungry little piggies, little hungry blacksmith piggies. Now, if you watched my previous video, you'll understand the absolute value of mercenaries and selling them. After doing the math and rounding down, these tier three journals that were filled, 152 of them, and you can fill these at the same time as you fill the mercenary journals. They fill at the same time. They don't split the, the, the fame, which is awesome, right? That is worth 720, no, no I'm sorry. It's worth 600k. Round it down. 600k. This is 600k worth of journals. You can't sell these journals for 600k, but if I feed these journals into the laborers and they level up and I sell the laborers at tier 4, that's 600k worth right here. It's so good. Now, finally, is the challenge points. I tell everyone, always make your own guild. During this time, I earned 80,000 challenge points in 1 hour and 20 minutes, which will get you... 300 siphon energy, which sells for 900k, so let's do the math, that's 20% off, that is 720,000 in siphoned energy that I've earned. So in total, 2.6 million silver in 1 hour and 20 minutes, if you take away that 20 minutes, uh, that would be 1.76 million silver per hour. Now when you do level up your guild, the uh, challenge point value here will be cut in half because it will take twice as long to hit the next level and so on and so forth until you drop the guild, remake it, in three days and then repeat so this value will drop unless your guild is level one all right now let's talk about fame all right i need to rebind my mic mute button because i filmed this whole next segment and you know got to the post editing part and holy crap i was on mute the entire time anyway let's go over fame i'm not muted right now so fame without premiums 549,000. A premium adds 274,000, and a 8.3 satchel adds 302,000. That is a potential total of 1.127 million per hour, but it will cost you 600,000 silver, which is why I do not recommend the satchels, okay? Now, let's say you did all, all of the above, but you were max spec, and it all goes into fame credits at a 1.61 rate, because I'm using an offhand. That would be 1.814 million fame credits. And then if you dumped all of those into one spec, that's 3.6 million fame into one thing. So if you do the math, because uh, I spent an hour and 20 minutes doing the dungeons, it's 2.9 million fame per hour. Now, the effective fame earned if you have no max specs is 11 million, and that is basically uh, like cloth armor wearer, you know, or cloth helmet wearer, stalker hood, leather armor wearer, stalker jacket, etc. Uh, so I always recommend when doing this, what I showed off in the video, do it with something you're not max spec at. That way you get the most out of your fame earned, okay? 
Anyway, as always, be a bro, stay swole, make sure you return your shopping carts, uh, donate if you can, hit the like button, you better subscribe, I did all of this and showed you all this fun stuff and how to beat bosses really quickly, so you better subscribe, and I will see you in the next one, take care lads.